Hey guys, I'm back. Are you sick of bonus videos yet? Yeah, me too, kinda. Let's get back to working on the truck. Tavish is already gone on his mission, so you're gonna see him appear in several videos coming still, even though he's already gone. We recorded a whole bunch of stuff, just record, record, record. Editing takes so much time. I don't know if you guys know how much time editing takes, but I put two, sometimes three, four or five hours sometimes into each video, just in the editing piece of it. So it slows down the process of working on the truck or on whatever I'm working on, but it's a labor of love. I love to do it. I appreciate all of your support. Be sure and like, subscribe, and uh, share so that you know I can continue providing these videos and such for you. So I'm sitting here editing the video that you are watching right this second, but I wanted to give a quick intro. We're back to working on the truck, and we will get more videos done and posted. We have some very exciting news coming up, so be sure and like and subscribe so that you don't miss those. Click the bell notification so that you get notified. It's some really big news, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. But let's get back to the truck. The washer tank has arrived. Ordered that from LMC Trucks. There are certain parts on these old trucks that you can only get at LMC Truck. They're the only company that makes them, as far as I know. That's the only place I've been able to find that. So I got that plugged in, wired. Um, I bought the new plug for it, new motor, um, new tank itself, and then had to also get one of the little T fittings. Uh, and then we'll get all of the hose here locally, just like I've said previously. Um, these are heat, heat shrink fittings, so I need to still put a torch to those and melt them down so that they are watertight. And then get that mounted. And while I'm doing this, Tavish is busy on the inside putting the new seat covers on. So strapping them around the back of the seat, getting them as tight as he can so it doesn't have wrinkles. It's gonna look good, it's gonna look newer, but it'll cover up all of this kind of stuff that's happening on the seat. And eventually we'll get new upholstery and that sort of thing in here, but for now, this is what we're doing. Well, that's that at least until we get washer line and run the fittings to all of the things. So let's move to the filler neck issue in the back. Alright, so while I work on this I'll tell you a quick story because I'm not afraid to tell you when I make mistakes. So I set out the filler necks on <clears throat> the tailgate of my truck when I went to put them on this truck. And I set them front tank, rear tank. And when I went to put them on the truck, I grabbed them, front tank, rear tank, and I turned around to the truck and I had them backwards. Front tank, rear tank. So I put the wrong filler neck on the front. I got up there and I tried to connect it and it was too long by about four inches, maybe three inches, I don't know. But it was too long, so I didn't even think anything about of it. I just cut it and I connected it. I came to the back and I went to connect and I was just that far too short. In fact, I can show you how much short I was because I have the new part. I had to order another filler neck. So dumb. That was like a $45 mistake. So, learn from my mistakes. Just slow down and do it right the first time. It was short by one inch. That far. 
I'm beginning to wonder if this one's long enough too, but it came right to the edge of the filler neck, the metal filler neck. Drove me crazy. Anyway, but I also cut my vent line too short as well. So I've got to fix that as well. So hang tight, we'll get this thing back together. All right, now I got to fight to get the new one on. I lowered the tank. I don't know, it probably only dropped not even an inch, <clears throat> but it was just enough to, to allow me to get a wrench up and on there to loosen the band. So I'm gonna try to get this one back up in there. Oh, I'm gonna fight this. This will be fun. So it wasn't too bad, I suppose. It took me a good solid 10 minutes to get it back in there, but let's see if I can show you. That is the band for the large filler neck. That's the band for the small filler, or the vent line. <clears throat> but I got it back in there, and that's what matters. I did have to drop the tank down on this one side, put the vent hose on, and then feed it up over the top of the frame rail as I stuck the tank back up in there. Kind of a nightmare, but, but I was able to get it, so. That's the important thing. Let's just get this thing buttoned back together and move on to the next thing. All right, let's test this out by shoving some gas in it. See if she'll drink it. Hoping for no leaks. Let's see what happens. Yep, so far so good. No leaks underneath. It's going in full speed. I'm going to give this thing about 8 gallons and then I'm going to put some uh, heat fuel treatment in there just in case some water got down in the tank during the process and the waiting for me to get all these things done. We had the filler neck uh, opening taped off for the majority of the winter but I'm still worried that moisture got in there somehow and we got to take care of that before we suck it through the engine and cause ourselves more problems. Oh yeah, she's thirsty. We're gonna get about 15 feet to the gallon in this thing too. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna save a little bit for the lawnmower. Grab another one, fill her up. That's the stuff we're talking about. Heat, fuel, antifreeze, and water remover. So we suffered a minor setback on the truck. I was trying to just start it to move it to another spot back over to the gravel. And it will not, it won't start, it won't keep running. This happened right after I replaced the uh, filler neck and added new fuel to it. So I'm wondering if I kicked up a bunch of debris and it clogged the fuel filter. I mean, that's. I don't know, that's weird. But I bought new spark plugs, new plug wires, uh, cap and rotor. I'm gonna make sure that all my gaps are correct, make sure I'm getting good spark. As I pull the plugs, I'll be able to tell if there's oil down in the cylinders. One symptom that I had was when I stopped cranking the motor, oil was dripping out of what appeared to be the back seal, the rear main seal. It was coming out from between the, the motor and the uh, transmission bell housing. So that's frustrating. I'm not sure what's happening there, but I've, I'm halfway through the process of getting uh, the, the rear bumper installed. I had to go buy a tap and die set and a new drill. The cordless drill I've been using just does not have, I can't get the bit in tight enough in the keyless chuck to stay bit so the the drill bit stops and the drill keeps spinning and it's just frustrating so I went and bought a keyed half inch drill um, nice craftsman but anyway that's the task for the day I'm gonna get on it and keep you guys along for the ride I'll tell there's the oil that was bleeding out of it as I was cranking I made a puddle under the truck Let's see if I can get that to show up a little better yep there's the puddle 
butt, so I threw some cardboard under it to catch it so it wouldn't make such a big mess. And of course the wind's blowing today, so you might not even be able to hear me, but anyway, let's get working on this thing. Get a bumper mounted, figure out why it won't run, and uh, get this project underway. on it but it doesn't actually look too bad but we're gonna replace them anyway they look old they're probably the ones I put on 20 years ago touched it and some of it fell off so it actually looks a little better than it did when I first pulled it out but that thing was corroded pretty nasty it still is not sure if that shows up real well or not but it's a good thing we're replacing them rusty and old really old in with the new Well, it's creeping up to be close to 100 degrees again today. So I finally broke down and put the shade tent up. Underneath the hood is like an oven. The wind was blowing earlier and it felt pretty good, but the wind has really died down and it's just really getting hot under there. So I ran to my local parts store, picked up a set of plug wires, and the washer hose that I need to finish that project. So that's going to be done today. <clears throat> but let's get those spark plug wires open, start running. Got a new distributor cap right there, new rotor right there, and it goes right there. Let's get after it. Battery. corroded it's pitted on the end so that's not good we'll get that swapped out with a brand new one so I pull them off one by one and make sure that I get something that's at least similar in length sorry about the airplane it happens every time I start talking it's frustrating but anyway just manually check them against the other one so you're getting at least close to the same length and then you can route them the same direction as the others. Do them one at a time so that you keep track of where they plug in and your life will be a lot easier. Well, do I dare start it? Let's do it. Why not? Only we'll live once. She runs! She's alive! Oh, that's a 
huge relief. Now to see what's happening under the truck as far as oil goes. Still burning a little bit of oil. I'm pretty sure that those are the top and like the valve stem seals, but I don't want to tear into it that far at this point um, because Tavish is going to be leaving here soon and I want him to be able to drive this before he goes and enjoy it. So let's uh, work on the bumper and see if we can get the bumper up. All the things. So that little bugger is what's left of the bolt that broke off when I removed the original bumper. The old white rusty one. I finally got it drilled out and got the mounting bracket in place for the one side. But that's gonna have to do it for this video. This is Troy with DIY Home and Auto. Um, check back, next video we'll have the bumper mounted you can see we've got license plates in the window, or right there. <clears throat> got insurance on it, I've taken it for a drive. I took it down and showed uh, my buddy Kenny, the manager of the O'Reilly's closest to my home. I've been buying parts off and on from him about this truck since November, and it's now uh, late August. <clears throat> so he wanted to see it, I took it in, showed it to him. He's very impressed. Uh, he realizes there's a lot of work yet to be done, but we're getting there. So this is Troy, DIY Home and Auto, checking out. Until next time, give me a like, and uh, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes, and I appreciate your support. Comment down below. Thanks.